Welcome back to part five of a fast conversation about the Fast and Furious. I'm Corbin Zavokal. I'm Jackson Meheran. And I'm Cody Webb. <laughs> yes, that's right. The other half of Cap, Cody Webb, is here to join wow. us along for this fifth edition of a fast conversation. We're talking Fast Five today. We all three have just recently watched it. We're going to talk about it for exactly 15 minutes. Again, adding another five since we have a guest here. Jackson, you've never seen it. Are you are you ready to finally discuss Cody and I's favorite of the franchise? I'm stoked and worried that this is the favorite of the franchise. <laughs> <laughs> Only downhill from here. Oh, 15 no. minutes on the clock, setting the timer. Let's get it started. Cody, why did you have to be on for Fast Five? Explain it. Well, you know, there's lots of reasons, but I mean, this is one of my favorite uh, kind of modern action films. We have done a cap episode on it, so check that out if you haven't seen it. Season one, episode nine. Throw it also, back. I, I kind of just want to be a part of the series, kick it into fifth gear, uh, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. This movie, it's dumb fun. Um, it's super rewatchable, uh, unbelievably quotable, has some of the worst acting of all time, <laughs> but uh, it's a gem, man. And uh, I think it is probably my favorite of the Fast franchise. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean it's good, but I definitely enjoy uh, the rewatch 100%. I think maybe this is like the 10th time I've seen it. So yeah, I'm a big fan. I agree. It's incredibly rewatchable. The action's great. Uh, the set pieces are extremely well done. There's a lot of practical stunts being done. And for me, it's also like a nostalgic. This is the first Fast and Furious movie I saw in a theater. I don't even think I'd seen Fast and, Fu Fast and Furious uh, the fourth one when I went to go see it. So I had no idea that Letty died. I'd just seen the first one. Uh, but yeah, this one, I, I don't know. It holds a special place in my heart. And it's kind of like Ocean's Eleven with fucking Fast and Furious, which is sick. Jackson, what were your thoughts after watching it for the first time? This movie has everything. It has mostly, well, not everything, I guess. It has a lot of heists. It has people coming back from the dead. Um, post credit scene. I, post credit i is this like post credit scenes before like marvel movies this was 2011 like, so yeah but this is like the little... second one right the second time they've done it because they did it in tokyo drift too yeah that's true tokyo drift was a little bit earlier i'm not sure but i digress continue but it had awesome stuff like it had insane stunts that like kind of topped the fourth one in ridiculousness um really cool practical effects and behind the scenes stuff that i i'm sure we'll get into and Overall, I think the acting was better. Um, and it had Rock, it had Dwayne the Rock Johnson when he was like kind of peak the rock, like he was still an asshole, like like his characters were kind of like douchebag, like tough guys, and really badass and like tough and grizzled, and like he was kind of like playing his wrestler character still, which was kind of like the shit. Him, and, of... him and Vin Diesel literally have a wrestling match in the middle of yeah. this movie. Oh, like, it's insane. They're throwing each other through like six walls. And it's really good. Each other. It's good. It's really it fun. Well done. Yeah. Um, and now their method acting has led to them hating each other in real life still. Uh, yeah, he's just kind of like peak the rock in this. If you're going to see a rock movie. And it's like before we became oversaturated with the rock in, in movies. Like this was before all that happened, even though yeah, you're like, seeing it late. Yeah. I kind of feel like this is like the version of the rock where like, he doesn't have this chip on his shoulder yet of like, Oh, I'm a Hollywood actor now. And I can't lose fights contractually. Like, I don't know. He still feels like a cool guy in this. Yeah. yeah. I, I definitely best. It. He's also extremely sweaty. Um, every time him and Vin Diesel are like face to face. He's glistening. <laughs> it's just boring sweat um uh, yeah every fight scene with the rock i feel like it's 10 times better mm -hmm. honestly probably my favorite action scene is when uh the rocket launcher guy comes out of nowhere uh right before the third act um and his whole team just gets massacred <laughs> like i think that's actually good action um but i don't know i feel like vin diesel i don't know i don't think he's great in this movie but all of his set pieces are, are definitely very well done i think like the stunt work in this movie is pretty dang good. Like you said, their fight between them, they literally go through like five straight walls in a row. Um, so shout out to the stunt doubles because I mean I think they put in the real work for this movie. Yeah, it, it's in, it's an incredibly good works. Um, I love the location shooting as well. I believe this was mostly shot in Puerto Rico, um, but it's really cool. Just like the Rio setting, I think is my favorite Fast and Furious setting. Um, the chase through the favelas is an incredible set piece and it doesn't even it's hilarious it's stupid and it doesn't it's even like parkour parks. but without parkour people doing it like it's just like they're just jumping like it's nothing crazy at all 
<laughs> Jackson, so funny. you described this movie as confusing. What what was confusing to you about it? Well, you have, of course, this is the movie where like people who are dead have are now showing up again. And it's not until the end of the movie that it's kind of revealed that uh, the set the time of which this the takes time place. jump is weird. Um, also, like the whole plot of like, all right, the bad guys are stealing this car to get a computer chip that tells them where their money is. Like, what is that even about? Like, I must have missed something because like, that didn't D- make any sense. The DEA took these cars to from them. So then they had to steal it back from the DEA to get their chip back. It, and they didn't want the DEA to get it. So they had to steal it. The thing that's oh. confusing is like Dom and Brian like realize something's up and then they just like turn on these guys, but they're pissed that they're like fighting back. And it's like, you're trying to screw them over too. I, I don't know. Yeah, it's it's weird. And then like I don't know. I feel like the bad guys could have just moved the location of their money and then like problem solved. Like it, it sucks for them for sure, but they don't lose all their stuff by the end of it if they just did that. Yeah, I mean, there's also like this whole chunk of the movie where they're supposed to be like on the run from both the Rock and the Portuguese guys, but then they're also going to street races and like stand yeah. up and like it's a little confusing about why they're not they're not just apprehended sooner. Yeah, and then I mean, you, and then you have this like woman character, this like this cop character who like has Vin Diesel's neck. Like, what is her connect? Like, I did not get that at all. Like, what was her connection to him? Her and they both have lost their loves. I mean, I guess that's really it. I, I don't. But like, he was there. like, they know who you are. Like, whenever he like like saved her in that like face off, and it's like, who is it? Like, is there like some weird implied background that he knows her from, or like, what is? No, I, I think it's just to be assumed that like the 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 Portuguese, the Brazilian mafia here knows her face now, and she's like the only good cop. Oh. So they're gonna come and kill her. Cody, what were you wanting to say, man? Oh yeah, just going back to the. Uh... <laughs> Going back to the uh, the big Brazilian bad guy, um, I don't know. He's just not really that bad. Like uh, the worst thing that happens to Dom and Brian is like they get captured for ten seconds and then like and they miraculously escape from hanging handcuffs. Um, and then, like you said, they literally just like kind of dance around the city for the rest of the movie, doing whatever, whatever they would want. You'd figure this guy he supposedly has like eyes and ears everywhere in the favelas. Well, he lost that pretty quick. I, I don't know, but. Yeah, not a great bad guy, kind of forgettable, but the heist scenes I, I do really like. And I think that's kind of the new flavor that this movie really adds to the Fast franchise that obviously you guys have seen the other four recently. I thankfully have not, but uh, the heist <laughs> is something new to the Fast franchise, correct? Yeah, I mean, like, it's always about doing a crime, but this one is so specific of, like, stealing a safe and they have to, like, get the whole team together and they got to get the handprint and practice and there's a fake at it like it's so much it's more in like like i said the oceans 11 vein of they lay out the plan and then things twist it's like it turns itself on its head and they're all smarter than you. like it's more like that than any other fast movie before it yeah i think this movie's kind of just a rip off of a bunch of other ones oceans 11 is, is the obvious one mcu still on the post credit well, scenes you here's the about. thing also you say mcu burning... oh god you say MCU, but I, I this is almost like the Avengers of the Fast and Furious movies it really at is. this point. Because you bring in everyone from their own standalone movies. You've got the Tokyo Drift guy. You've got, you know, your Fast Four guys from the beginning. Your one and two. Like, everybody, you know, Ludacris and, yeah. Yeah, Ludacris and Tyrese from the second one. are all coming together for this big movie. And it's one year before those fucking Joss Whedon <laughs> Inge- Avenger fucks did it in 2012. Yeah. Fast Five did it first. Also, another thing they rip off is like burning money. Uh, because I feel like that's just direct response to the Joker Joker. Moment. Joker. Yeah. Um, but yeah, tons of rip-offs, but hey, I think this movie kind of brings it all together well. So I'm not a hater. Yeah. It, the cast is incredibly charismatic. All those characters they bring in, this is the peak of them being. And you know how I said like the rock kind of got oversaturated in movies. I think as this franchise goes on these characters become a little bit oversaturated. And when it's like Tyrese making the same joke in fast nine that he was making in fast five, it it gets a little bit old, but at this point it is so like refreshing and new and it's really smart and funny. I I just do think it eventually will get tired on us. Totally. I feel like any franchise after 10 movies or so (laughs) where you do the exact same thing, will do that um and shout out fast six as well i'm excited for you to see that one jackson because i don't think it's terrible um but i don't know like you said the cast is great gal gadot shout out to her i think she's not terrible in this movie either Doesn't, isn't cast- she the bad guy in the last movie like that's like kind of a thing right 
Uh, I, I no, I don't think so. Is she not like a femme fatale from the? I, I maybe I don't understand. You gotta, you gotta wait till what? Enough. You just watch the next one. You'll see what happens. I think you're Gal Gadot is not in later movies. No, but she's no. I'm talking about in the fourth one. She was like the femme fatale. Oh, like the yeah, yeah. yeah. She kind of was. Now she was working like, for the bad guy. Okay, yeah. That's she what gained, I was but she was kind that. of always ga- she gained Dom's respect. They worked together a little bit. She was kind of always helping him out. And then like they were flirty, but then she ended up with the dude who died in in tokyo drift which yeah, was kind of funny yeah, too yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but he hasn't gone to tokyo yet also, he's still hanging out they literally brought it him in and they're like we need someone who can drive like these tight corners in this parking garage and it's like obviously it's going to be him right like that was like his whole thing from that last movie and they're like well, he no. wasn't like, the drift king he was just the guy who like he like helped him do the drift king stuff though yeah. he like didn't he train him they didn't bring in lucas black which <laughs> we'll, we'll save true. that for later <laughs> it's just i don't know so goofy Cody just recommended a, a Lucas Black episode on our our most recent. <laughs> oh no, he's in a uh, forty two. Surprisingly, he's, he's good. But uh, and another thing I want to talk about too, I gotta throw out a couple of my favorite quotes, uh, of course, for this mini episode. Uh, this is Brazil, maybe the best line in movie history. Also, um, uh, you hungry? Good, because you're saying grace. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> that was really funny. <laughs> Might personally be my favorite line in cinema history. Uh, also, bringing back Vince is kind of just way out of left field, and uh, I don't really understand why they did that. Other than and then kill him. <laughs> yeah, but that is a great line. So I, I understand bringing him back just for that. I, I had a couple quotes I wrote down. Two two rock quotes to be specific. Um, Do not ever let them get in the cars, which is a classic. Um, and then takes the file here's what makes sense and then just throws the file away which is just great <laughs> um and then of course you've got a uh, ludicrous did he uh slap that ass or hold on to it and grab it which that is was insane <laughs> it is <laughs> like the later. most bro movie to ever exist it's insane. it really is it is a like man's you, man movie. there's there's this scene where like brian's revealing that like him and uh toretto um, what is her name mia they're like they're pregnant and expecting a child and they're like oh dude you got laid like oh shit it's like that's not what this is that's not what this moment should be brian's speech about him not having a father is probably the worst acted scene in the whole movie where brian's just like i never knew my dad you don't know what that's like tell me about your father vin <laughs> terrible stuff and then, and then vin just does like a weird mumble growl I remember everything about my father. <laughs> like all the dialogue, like I had to put on the subtitles again. Like the first ten minutes, it's all action, and then they like settle down for the rest <laughs> of the action. I'm like, I can't understand anything Vin Diesel is saying. So, yeah, if you do rewatch this, uh, subtitles I think is a must. The thing that they're not really, I'm not sure who's like bankrolling this heist project. Like the fact that they get the safe, they have this giant warehouse that they're working out of. Like they get, I mean, yes, they're stealing cars, but it, they're like. At, the wits end in the beginning of this movie and then suddenly like okay we're gonna steal 100 million dollars well we've got all this uh great equipment to do it with they were running up the card debt because they knew they were gonna get that payout and it wouldn't matter <laughs> worked out worked out for them all right we're nearing the end where does this rank amongst the titles of fast and furious movies fast five what do you think jackson it's like fine uh, I'd, I'd put it uh what do, what do we have it ranked at right now currently? Current ranking is uh who knows? Oh, here we go. I've got it right here. All right. Currently it's uh the Fast and the Furious, Too Fast, Too Furious, Tokyo Drift, and then last Fast and Furious. I think I'd put it below Too Fast, Too Furious. Because that's just too that. cheese. Over over uh over Tokyo Drift. Yeah. I like it. I All right. It. This is the first one that changes the format a little bit too. Just eliminating the Furious altogether. Integrating the number True. into the title. It's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> and then sometimes they don't do that and sometimes they do. But it's not chronological either. So it's like, why, why even well, number Yeah, these? yeah. That, this is technically the uh, fourth currently chronologically. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, you just, know, whatever. Just forget about Tokyo Drift for like four more movies. And you'll, one more movie. One more movie. Six is the last six. Yeah. And then Tokyo Drift takes place after six. No. I think it might yes. be after the post credit scene of six <laughs> is the end of Tokyo Drift. I'll say that right now. Oh, okay. Okay. With that in mind, wow. I remember what that do you scene. think what do you think is gonna happen in six, Jackson? Um, I mean, they gotta be over 
on the continent, like Eurasia somewhere. Like they got to at that point. Finally get to Europe. I I do believe you're right. This is some European heist making. Uh, There's some planes. There's some Shaw, but not maybe the Shaw that you're thinking of. Mm, A different Shaw? uh, Yeah. So uh, good villainy, lots to expect, some more death. And of course, Letty. What do you expect out of bad Letty here? Why is she back? That doesn't make any sense. Also, is Brian in the next movie? Or yeah. is he out now? But like, no. he just got like $10 million. Why Why are you risking it all again? Letty's back, dude. He's going to get pulled back in. There's always something to pull him back in. Man. Mm. It's always, always one last something. job. One last ride, baby. And then on that note, there's our timer. One last ride. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. This was a fast conversation about Fast Five. And we'll catch you for Fast and Furious 6.